G'day, fellas. And welcome to week number four of the Outback Octagon. You'll notice some differences around this place. We got a new UI up in the top of the screen, and you can see who we've got on this, well, in this game. Starting building that town center down in the bottom side of the map. He's already scouted out a nearby neighbor. It is going to be from Australia, Snooper, playing as the French in blue. Now, hold on a minute. Just before you thought, oh, that's not good. He's spawned right next to uh, somebody else. Who could it possibly be? It is Iaguas. It is Iaguas, another Australian down playing the English. So before the game has even really begun, I suspect we may have our first alliance, but that's not all we've got. Over on the east of the map, we've got Casper who spawns very close to Litacor. Litacor going to be on the French here, playing in the color red. He's going to be substituting in for Vortex today. And to his, to his very brief west, we've got Casper who is on the pink in the Rus. Oh, I tell you what, I'm a little bit scared right now for Litacore because I don't know about you guys, but Casper is an absolute beast. If you guys missed last week, he took out four people, including a 2v1. He was the one and he took out two people. So watch out for this guy. Next up towards the north in a beautiful position, somebody who loves to trade. It is Wham01 and he's on the French, which is a civilization, which as you guys know, loves to trade. So Wham getting some great synergy over there. Over in our western corner, we've talked about two, we've talked about four, we've talked about five. Let's talk about the last three. Spawning in as the green. On the deli, we've got I am Averly. Towards his west, playing as the Chinese, and already things are getting a little bit scary. We've got Divine. Now, Divine's not done well in the first three weeks. He's really going to need to make a good showing here today to try and get himself up in those points. He's rolled the Chinese, which is a pretty damn good roll, but the problem may be that he gets focused down by the players around him. And speaking of other players that are around him, towards his south, playing in the yellow, on the Holy Roman Empire, we've got State. So these are your players, ladies and gentlemen. Who is going to team up? Who is going to work against each other? I, I suspect over here, I mean... We talk about Litacor and we talk about Casper and that Litacor is probably not in the best spot here, spawning right up against the Lion's Den. But he's got two golds under the town center, so things aren't terrible for him. But remember that Casper uh, is playing as the Rus, which means that he's got access to gold just through killing hunts. And if there's something I know about Casper, he is very efficient at that. Uh, so he's currently sitting on zero. Uh, but I suspect that bounty is going to ride or rise rather very, very quickly. Now, one of the other things I want to take a look at as well is going to be for Wham and for his uh, for his trading post. So we've got a trade post up towards the north. Uh, it is on that central island. So it's going to be a very big point of contention. And then down towards the center on this big island, this main island, we've got another one that is down here. Now, before we get into it as well, I'd love to give a huge shout out to the guys who did this overlay. As you guys will see, we've got a beautiful overlay at the top of our screens at the moment. And that's going to give us plenty of information about the state of the game, the state of the players. Uh, so a huge shout out goes to Koosh. Uh, I think that's how I pronounce it. He also did a lot of the work for the overlay for N4C as well as for Golden League. So big shout out to him as well as, uh, as uh, Red Bull. Um, and then in addition to that, of course, Technique. He's, uh, he's a good friend of mine and someone I've been working with for quite some time. And he's also helped me out, uh, at, come through right at the last second. So obviously, you know, this is, this is pretty damn impressive, pretty damn good. But hey, look, we've still got dreams about one day potentially even getting the chat up here for the moment. You guys are just going to have to deal with, th with this thing over here. Uh, unfortunately, we've got, we got to sort of, <laughs> we got to take Snooper's, uh, screen and, and back, we'll take a little bit off that. But, uh, yeah, th that's essentially the way that it works. But I mean, let's talk about this game. Let's, let's take a look at these crossings that we've got because down towards the south, there's a little bit of fish down here. All the rest of the fish, it's not going to be that deep water fish. It's just going to be these smaller little fish that you get. Now, interestingly, there's nothing in this pond at all up here. There we go, a little bit further along. So it means Casper, who is over on this eastern side, is going to be able to gather food from over here. And remember, he's fishing as the uh, as the Rus. And Rus have got some of the best fishing in the game, if not the best fishing in the game. So pretty damn awesome to see that Casper is out here already doing that. Now, when it comes to crossings, we've got one crossing here as well as a crossing here. So this is going to be a pretty central point of battle, I would suspect. In addition to that, there's also another crossing up a little bit further. 
If we continue moving up, there is another crossing towards the north. And then finally, another crossing. So there is plenty of ways for these Westerners to get over towards the east of the map and see all the rest of the way go Ren. Uh, that's, that's a little Chinese joke. I don't know how many of you guys will get that. But uh, we'll, we'll take a look at all the other crossings. So no other crossings from this island over across here. Uh, we've got another one in the middle of the map going across to the sacred site. So it's going to be important. We'll take a look and see how many other sacred sites we can spot. Uh, we have three sacred sites on this map. So we're going to have one more down here towards the south. And then... Oh, oh, okay. This is interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Because you could take these two sacred sites, pretty much wall them in, and then just look to defend this sacred site here in the middle. And if you can hold this... Uh, I'm going to call it now. I reckon we might have a sacred site victory on our hands. It's probably going to be for one of these guys at the bottom. There's been a lot of them, four of them, uh, that have all spawned in uh, towards this south side. But we can now see that we've got the Chamber of Commerce coming up for Lidacore. So perhaps he's already spoken a little bit to uh, to Kasper and said, Hey, Kasper, uh, let's be friends. Because if he wasn't thinking about that, then it's highly likely he would be, he would be moving towards maybe a school of cavalry when you spawn this damn close to Kasper. Because that is something scary. I mean, the other alternative is Kasper's like, Yeah, sure, we can be friends. And just behind over here in the fog of war, he's just got down plenty of, of rams. He's the kind of guy who might do that. I'm not, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but I would suspect it from Casper. I would always be watching out for him. Divine now going to be reaching the feudal age. Uh, things not looking pretty right now for Averly, but fortunately, he has already begun evacuating. We can see the Tower of Victory is coming up for Averly. He's taken a few shots there. One of the villagers going to be going down in the water. Unfortunately, she goes to a very watery grave. We don't even get to see her body. She just floats on down to the very bottom and starts getting eaten by the fishes. But... Uh, Averly going to be able to uh, to evacuate from this. And with that, Divine going to be able to secure this position towards the north. So smart move there by Averly. It's, it's re really important that you try and cockroach out in the event you get a very close spawn to China like this. We've seen it before. We saw it last week where Demuslim was able to take out B quite early in the game uh, because B was stuck into the corner. But Averly does the right thing. Instead of building his landmark here, instead of building it over here, he makes sure that he moves it out over into the middle of the map. It's a little bit more vulnerable, but at the end of the day, it means that you're not going to be going down. Speaking of going down, we've got the Ark and Chapel coming down now for state. We'll ride around the board and see what else we find. Snooper going with the Chamber of Commerce as well. He'll be looking to get some trade going. And speaking of trade... Nope, we don't have any trade just yet. But uh, Litacor is up to the second age. Oh my lord. Okay, just when I thought that things were going absolutely fine for Litacor, things just got a lot worse. We've now got the Kremlin going to be coming up. It is a Kremlin rush. You gotta watch out for this guy. You have got to watch out for this guy. So for anybody who doesn't know, Casper, he is an absolute madman. He is the kind of guy, he will just, he will take on, he goes to the bar, and he doesn't look for fights, but when it happens, he will take down 17 people and he will do it with both of his hands behind his back. Like, he is just insane. I got no idea how the guy does it. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got in store today, but unfortunately, it looks like Lytical is going to be the very first one that comes up against the threat here. So I'm suspecting that it's probably going to be some sort of ram aggression. We can already see that he, he's preparing for a little bit of a wood shop down towards the south here. Also, the Kremlin's going to be able to extend out that, that a little bit further. We'll ride on board over on the on the south side and see where these Australians are up to. Because these guys may potentially become the story. We did see that in the first week, Snooper worked together with another Australian uh, to, to be essentially the biggest cockroaches that ever existed. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be seeing that today. I, I think we're going to see a little bit more of a... Uh, a little bit more of a mammal alliance. But uh, it's it's going to be very difficult for... for uh, Politicor at this point in time. State now reaching the second age. Arkham Chapel is up. He's just chilling out for the moment. Uh, we'll take a look at his resources. You can see at the moment, I'm, I'm looking up here uh, to see exactly where he's up to. You can see he's going to be working on that castle age himself. Uh, he's got a pretty good idea of what's going on. When we take a look at the relics as well, you can see relics at the moment primarily distributed around this south side, as well as on this central island up towards the north. So this could be a nice little spot as well, but I mean, really, like, really, at, at this point in time, Wham is just in a great position. He's all by himself, and he's going to realize that and start walling himself in. We now see the crossings getting walled up by Wham. I suspect he's going to be looking to wall up this one any second. Come on, Wham, don't do me like that. Uh, but uh, you can see just how far he's walling these ones in. Like, he, he could be walling here, but he's not. You can see just how far he's extending this one out. 
and really going aggressive with these walls early. Wants to prevent any sort of footholds coming in like the one that we are starting to see on the south side of his island. Still not going to wall that one in. He might not have He might not have discovered it yet. Let's check in. No, he, he does know the crossing is there. Uh, it will take his time though. Everybody now up to the feudal age. Everyone is here. Everyone is queer and we don't want any more bears. Stable going to be coming out. Interesting from Casper to go into Stable. And look at Casper actually walling in. Lidicor. Ooh. Oh, I'm starting to feel terrible for Lidicor right now. Things not looking good. Things going to get a lot worse before they get better for Lidicor. And I, I feel like they're probably only going to get better for him in the next game. Oh, damn. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see how he plays it out. Back towards Averly. He's still looking to do a bit of a migration. You can see he's actually got villages underneath the town center. I don't know if he realizes these are actually going down. Hold on. Are they going down? Yeah, they're being targeted by the Barbican. I, th I think the Barbican might be able to get them right when they drop off like that. I'm not sure exactly what's happening. He's got 10 bills here, though. So it's, it's going to be hard for him to do it. But I I'm impressed that he's been able to do that. It can be really difficult for a, a pos in, in a position like this. Uh, just simply because the villagers, he can't actually run them out here. Because if he does, the Barbican will pick them off. We did see that first villager go down. Uh, but uh, we'll tune back in over with Lidicorp. We'll see how he's doing. As Kasvar has specialized the wooden fortress... Uh, the Wooden Fortress Rush. Two Wooden Fortresses up. First one's going to come down over on this stone outcropping. Second one going to come down on the berries. And Lidicor is finding out the hard way why Beastie has such a problem with Casper. It is because he can throw out one of these bad boys at any time. It is going to be that outpost rush. And he now looks to drop the third Wooden Fortress that is going to be coming down right in this awkward spot as well. And you can see how damn fast that goes up for him as well. Ah. Uh. Lidicor loses a knight as well. We also see that Wham is now going up to the third age. Going to be putting that guild hall right at the back as well. So you can see that he's thinking about the long game, really playing into it. Uh, he's got the potential to drop down a, a, a wonder at the back here. We might even look to see maybe a red palace get thrown down here just to look to be a little bit more defensive. And we've got the third landmark already coming up for Averly. He is just dotting landmarks around this entire map right now. First landmark is just chilling out. Barbican having a bit of a bit of a time with it. Second landmark, Tower of Victory, just hanging out in the middle. Third landmark, a little bit further along. Maybe the fourth landmark, it comes down in Casper's base. Maybe that's what we see. But now Lidicor <laughs> really under a lot of pressure. I mean, we can ride on board with Lidicor for a little bit. I don't know how much he's going to be holding on in this game. You can actually see he's saving up resources, so might be thinking about dropping down a landmark. Actually, let's ride on board with Lidicor. Let's not ride on board with Lidicor. Uh <laughs> oh my god. If anybody wondered, you know, why are they changing the way that outposts <laughs> trigger aggro? Oh, Lidicor. Um, yikes, dude. Wow. Okay. We're going to have to talk about this one after the game. So Lidicor, unfortunately, not being able to sneak a landmark out. This is going to be difficult for him because it basically just tells... Casper, hey, all three of my landmarks are back here. If you want to kill me, come do it. Uh, and so, unfortunately for him, doesn't have the option to really drop down, you know, just like a one one villager landmark over here or something and slowly tick it, tick it up. Uh, we did hear uh, fishing boats moving, maneuvering over towards this south side of the map. We continue to see expansion coming in. Quite a lot of town centers now getting thrown down here as well for our Australian. That's going to be our French Australian player as well. Uh, but uh, up towards the north, still Divine doing well. We hear that men at arms are now coming in. It looks like State might be going for a bit of a Burgrave assault. Indeed. No, it's not going to be Burgrave. It's going to be Regnitz. Uh, Regnitz coming in, looking to take down the Chinese additional town center. Iago's reaching the Castle Age as well. A lot of players now going up to that Castle Age. Lidicor obviously going to be reaching it as well, but he is really starting to struggle as more wooden fortresses come up. Divine's been eliminated. Divine just gives up 100%. He knows there's no way he can hold against this. And once again, Divine will go out as your first player in this fourth week. This is such a tough spawn for Divine here. Just once, just once he wanted to get a good spawn and it never happened for him. Every single week he got stuck. He, he looked for a corner, he got found and he got focused down and it's tough to see him going down here. So really unfortunate there for Divine. We'll ride on board with Wham. I think he's probably going to be the quietest for now. So rest in peace to, for Divine. He will remain up here on our overlay. You guys will see him there. But all of his numbers are going to be represented as zero. Uh, you know, I think it would be nice to get like a little cross or something through it so that we know uh, exactly. But uh, 
Yeah, it, it sucks because he, he gets focused down because not only is he China, but he is right next to a Holy Roman Empire player. And for anybody who knows about, you know, the way I love to bitch, uh, <laughs> Holy Roman Empire are very good against China. They just, they have all of their timings are just a, a little bit ahead of China's and they just really do well. Uh, so it, it's it's a very strong, solid matchup. Village is now moving out for Averly. And uh, speaking of villagers moving out, Litacor, he's going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place, or perhaps I should say a Kremlin and a hard place. And you can see that Kremlin going to be able to pick off some villagers here. It's managed to do some damage. Looked like there was a villager that might have gone underneath the town center as well. But, uh, oh, doesn't feel good right now. We start to see Monastery. It's coming down as well. Wham, going to be looking to pick up those relics. We already saw one relic get picked up over on the west side by State. He's going to be bringing back that second one. Now we've got a landmark that is going to be going down. It's going to be... You can see... And this is... For anybody wondering, this is indeed a bug. So you just see right there, it was a an orange notification that came up indicating that uh, that Averly's landmark had been destroyed. Yet, very clearly, it wasn't orange because orange is dead. The Barbican's not shooting. It is indeed going to be state that gets... That, that has killed that landmark. But now we've got stone walls coming up. Averly's going to be blocking out his opponent. We can already see some walls coming across here, doing what you'd almost very commonly see uh, in a... How would I say it? In, in a Mongolian Heights 1v1, is this is what you would see just to prevent those stone walls from coming up. It's going to allow state to come across here. Remember, he's cleaned out this part. He's managed to take control of this island. He's going to have a great little spot back here. This is this is super cool for him because if he's able to control the crossings... Now, keep in mind, there's not a lot of crossings here, okay? He's walled across the entire thing. You know, I think he might be able to get through there. But now those men at arms are going to be moving out. We can see the keeps are going to be going down. Now, keep in mind, Compound of the Defender is in as well for Averly. So he's going to be able to get these, cheap, these cheaper keeps, these cheap keeps... Uh, we'll check in over on the west side, and we can see another keep going to be coming down. Litacor actually going to be the one dropping that keep, and you can see he's going to have a tough time as that villager goes down. The Kremlin going to be able to deny it, and the keep not really going to be able to do much. So Litacor in such a hard spot. Now, I would be willing to change it to Litacor's perspective, but uh, I'll be honest with you guys. You guys are about to get your ears nuked. All right, we're going to do it. I just want to see what his line of sight looks like. <laughs> Nuclear launch detected. Uh, so he's got a single... A single scout. We actually see knights coming out. It looks like Yagwa is going to be coming to lend a hand to Litacor. Litacor wants to build a bit of an Australian alliance. He knows the land down under is going to be an, a very resourceful place. And we see Yagwa is coming through here, looking to cause a little bit of havoc in the base. As long as Litacor is able to hold on, there's a chance that Caspar might actually be in a bit of trouble here because the two Australians could be sending up reinforcements to their brother in the north. In the north. Uh, now let's check in over with... Uh, we'll ride back on board with Wham. Because you guys know Wham loves to trade. He loves a passive game. He is actually under attack in the middle. It's going to be a scout that does it. Relics slowly but steadily getting picked up out here. Guildhall. It's on gold. He's up to 1,000 gold. But you guys know Wham loves to keep that bad boy just rolling in. We see the second landmark. Now going to be going down. It's going to be State that takes it out. At the same time, Wham was looking to get in on it as well. Third landmark. It's over towards the east or rather towards the center. And, uh, and Litacor really struggling. Over on that that eastern side, he's got nine villagers in that in that uh, in that keep. You guys can see on the UI how many villagers he's actually got. That is all of his villagers right there. Compare that to Casper. Casper's on 58 villagers. He's booming like an absolute madman. And we can now see up in the north. And I, I think this is such a smart move by the Australians. The longer that they can force. Litacor to stay in the game, or the longer they can keep Litacor in the game, the more Casper is going to be committed to taking him out. And as a result, if you keep him in the game for longer, then it's going to be, it's going to work in your favor because you're going to be able to take out Casper. Because as you guys know, Casper is an absolute beast and he will 100% 2v1 these two Australians. So they, they, <laughs> they, they realize that they kind of need to 3v1 Casper to try and actually get rid of him. So very curious move. Stonewall's now coming up across these maps. Uh, so one of the things, yeah, that I, I would love to talk about is just the fact that State is slowly but steadily building up an island out here over on the west side. We see him delete a couple of fishing boats. He's going to be able to get up these stone walls here. Now he's continuing to move across the map. We actually see some interesting stone walls looking to come up from Averly. Averly ain't, ain't, you know, Mama didn't raise no, insert rude word right here. Uh... Because a Averly is the kind of guy, he will cockroach his way through this entire game if he has to. Uh, as, because that's what it's all about, baby. That is what it is all about. But uh, Snooper, I mean, 
He's, he's down in the south. He's having a great time. Everybody expanding. Wham now going to be looking to drop down. It's going to be the College of Artillery that gets, gets dropped down. It's up on the hill as well. The New Age begins. We've got our first Imperial Ages through. It's going to be Wham. It's going to be Iaguas. Iaguas is going to be going down with the Wingard Palace in the south side of the map. Keeping that landmark nice and safe. We start to see the first sacred site taken of the game. It's going to be Wham who does it. Keep in mind, we've got another two sacred sites over towards the east. Very easily capturable for one of these Australian. But uh, now we've actually got a bit of attention. Linacore might actually be going out after Casper at this point in time. And you can see the knights moving around. And uh, these two Australians working well together to try and take out the threat to the north. They know how strong this this guy is. They know that they've got to deal with Casper very seriously. We saw it was last week, I think it was Snooper as well as Puppy Paw that got taken out by Casper. And so I, I suspect <laughs> they're very scared of him. And isn't that interesting? Like the, the fact that we've got these two players down to the south that are teaming up. No, I don't know how much people know about this or whether they know like this is going to be a big late game threat. But th this could obviously be a big problem for them if Casper was to stay in the game. Because Casper has a an amazing ability to just stay alive. Now, speaking of staying alive, we did see him just drop down his third landmark. Now, that landmark's going to be down a little bit further. It's going to be the Abbey of the Trinity. So there's a good chance he's going to be dropping keeps down here. You can see he's got plenty of villagers on this stone. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a second or a third keep even drop down on that. And speaking of keep drops, we got Snooper moving across the map. He is coming out with plenty of villagers. We got Bombards already coming down for Iaguas. So even if you were thinking about dropping down some keeps, well, I got bad news for you. First landmark going to be going down. Second landmark going to be focused down now. It's going to be that Kremlin. Plenty of villagers inside it. Over towards the west of the map, we've got knights that are raiding now for Wham. He's got elite knights out. Three keeps in the center. All going to be trying their best to hold it down. Town center still yet to be repaired over here. We can see that uh, there's just a couple of sheep underneath there for the moment. The Tower of Victory is slowly being back repaired back to full. Compound of the Defender still unfound at this point in time. That second landmark is going to be going down in the base. Uh, for Casper, third landmark down towards the south. I don't know whether it's been spotted out yet, but uh, I suspect Snooper may know that there is a Casper presence down towards this southern length of the map and maybe even thinking about moving down here, or at least alerting his neighbor. And indeed, we now see elite knights from Iaguas moving down towards this position. I suspect Casper might actually be going out here before his immediate neighbor, Lidicor. And this is the consequence of spawning super close to somebody and not making friends with them. So, you know, we, we talk about this a lot. So down towards the south, you know, we had two people that spawned close together and they made friends. Now, obviously they were Australian. They might have been planning for it, but it, they had a fortunate spawn in that they had two villages and they both put their town centers down to the south. Uh, so, you, you know, super smart moving. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. They they might not realize. They might not realize. I, I wonder if they type, if he types in the chat like, hey, you're, you're killing my, you're killing my Bombard. Bombard now going to be fortunately getting away. Um, but, you know, and essentially Casper made a decision here. Okay. And now he's got, a, he made his bed. Now he's got to sleep in it. He decided I'm going to take down Lidicor. And unfortunately for him, he committed a lot of time to this, a lot of effort to this. He never actually did the killing blow. And that's going to mean that he commits all that effort, all that input. And unfortunately for him, he's not going to be able to do it. Casper gets up to Imperial Age. Oh my God, it's a Spaskaya Tower, but he puts it in the same spot. So not going to be able to like try and hide it. I was thinking maybe you could go and hide it up here, but we can see the walls have now come up. Elite Knight's going to be coming through as well. Third landmark has now gone down. And immediately, we can see that Smaskaya Tower looking to hold on. Casper knows he might be in trouble. We see Casper's lost three out of his four landmarks right now. Lidicor has indeed been spared for now. He remains alive. But remember, he's got nine villagers. He's got, is it negative three food? No, he's sitting on three food right now. Things not looking good for Lidicor. Smaskaya Tower holding strong. But remember, it does get outranged by those. Actually, I don't think it gets outranged by the Bombards. I think it, I think it matches the Bombard range. But there's a lot of units out here. I think there might be there might be some points going over to the Australians at this point in time. Scout going to be going down for Wham. No scouting allowed. No, not here. Second landmark has been repaired up for Averley. Third landmark still yet to be repaired, but he'll be happy with that, that he's got two back on the board at this point in time. Bombard's going to be focusing down that keep. And slowly but steadily, a huge threat in this game, Casper. He is going to be taken out early in this game. And remember, Casper is one of those players. Ooh, well, hold on a minute. Hold on a, hold on a minute, Drunker. Don't get ahead of yourself there. Casper's got a lot of villagers. That's a lot of bombards, though, and there's no villagers here to repair it up. 
He's going to be able to take out three Bombards so far. Fourth Bombard going to remain on the back line. You can see the Knight's going to be trying to do a bit of a body block there. One of them does get through. The Villagers are going to be trying their best, but now more reinforcing units heading into the base. Hold on a minute. Snooper, he said, hmm, I smell points. Do you guys smell that? I smell points. Yeah, yeah, I smell points. And and, and Snooper does indeed smell points. He's going to be looking to focus down Lidacore here, doing or finishing off what Gas for started. Down towards the south, that, was, that Bombard actually going to be doing plenty of work here. You can see it focusing down uh, the, the Bombard here, the Spaskaya Tower is, but at the same time, just a single villager comes through, going to be able to repair through that damage. And here it looks like we may indeed be seeing the final curtain close for Casper. It was a beautiful run that he had here. Unfortunately for him, it's going to be cut short 25 minutes into the game. And with that, the question will be whether he's able to make it through to the, the finals. We'll have to see how he plays it out or how the other people play around him in the set. But uh, unfortunately, that might be good night, Sweet Prince. Two, towns, or two landmarks in the main base. Third one over here. And the fourth and final one gets taken out. And with that, Iagwas going to be able to claim the first, or rather the next three points in the game. There she goes. Kaspar has been eliminated. But hold on, hold on. We've got another player that might be eliminated. We've got another player, Litacore. He's, he's, got, the, he's got the guild hall on wood. He's, he's looking to save up for a house or two. I think he had 140 in that bad boy. No, 200 when it went down. Now that third layer might gonna get focused down. So very, very quickly, the two Australians are able to take advantage of their enemies towards the north that instead of looking to team up and take down other people, look to take down each other. Now, we saw that earlier. We saw what happened down over with State. And I think that really goes to show that when it comes to this, and there, there goes Lidacor, so he is going to be your third player that's knocked out this evening. But, you know, th th this, this carries across a lot into modern war as well. That if you are going to have a military interaction with a neighbor or anyone for that part, you want it to be swift and you want it to be decisive. And the problem with Casper's attack over here is that it was not swift, it was not decisive. It was long, it was drawn out, it was an outpost rush, when probably it should have been a ram rush. If you've got a ram, then, you know, you've got a plan. But if you've got outposts, I mean, your enemy can just sustain through them. It takes time. And as a result of it taking time, it means that you've got to start thinking a little bit more outside the, the box about how you play it. Over on, on, on this western side, though, we saw a man with a plan just come through and absolutely steamroll over everybody that was close to him. And that was State. He did a great job. He took out Divine, grabbed those three points nice and early, and then moved forward. But now we've got ourselves a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a base beginning to build in the middle here. I love these <laughs> walls coming up here from Averly. He's looking to keep himself nice and safe here in the center. He's actually got a full ring of walls coming in. Doing a bit... Hold on. Oh my god, I totally didn't realize. Uh, so your keeps act as town centers. I didn't realize they act as drop-off points as well. Look at that long-distance mining. This is impressive long-distance mining. I don't think I've ever quite seen something like this. Early stages in the game. He's going to drop down a whole bunch of houses here as well. Averly, I mean, you can tell he's a top 100 player when you see this kind of stuff. Look at that. This is smart stuff. And you know what's going to be even smarter? When he walls out these keeps that are acting as town centers and then he's going to have to come down to this one this is just smart in the middle of the map now snooper has located Averly. he has spotted out Averly in the center he knows where that third landmark is now keep in mind that the second landmark it is safe it is well it is chilling out for the moment uh but uh i mean down towards the south we've got these australians and interestingly it looks like we might have a bit of a a movement between them. We've got walls now coming up for one of them. So maybe there might be dissent amongst the ranks. Trebuchet is coming in. State looking to cause a bit of havoc over on this western side of the map. We see that four bombards are going to be turning their attention towards these keeps, preventing that wood from being dropped off. Damn. And you, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. He's got plenty of houses up here. Unfortunately, not a lot of lumber camps, but that's okay. He's got wheelbarrow, right? Yeah, he's got wheelbarrow. It's fine. This is efficient. This is efficient. He's got wheelbarrow. Not only does he have that extra five carry capacity, he's also got the extra movement speed. This is smart. This is smart. To anyone who's laughing at this, don't be laughing. Don't be laughing. It's impressive. Bombard's continuing to clean up this position. It's going to be State looking to take out Averly, but keep in mind... This landmark down towards the the, uh, the center of the map still stands strong. And obviously, Snooper, he's going to be paying attention. He wants to wait for those other landmarks to go down. 
Now, he's going to know how many landmarks are left uh, for Aveling. And so he's going to know when there's one landmark that is left, that's when he kills it. Because he knows where it is. But hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait a second. Wham is not trading, but Wham is making friends. And it seems like Averly and Wham have built a little bit of an alliance. If you're going to take down these Australians, you're going to have to do it the right way. And that typically is going to mean you're going to have to do it with a friend. These guys are tough. And if they're fighting a 2v1 against you, it could be very difficult going up against them. And so with that, we see Averly once again begin to migrate. We talked about it a little bit earlier. The fact we saw him go from this town center out towards the Tower of Victory in the middle of the map. And then, of course, the compound of the Defender over on the, in the center. And now finally, the Hussar Academy comes down in that northern position. And he will look to build a whole new base up towards this northern position. Talk about traders, though. We have got ourselves a fair few traders here. Where are these guys going? Was there a wall? Okay, he, he, he must have, like, not put a gate through or something. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. But traders are now making their way through. We'll check in with them. 194 stone. Wham is actually trading. Oh my lord. Okay, so Wham is trading. That's a lot. So for anybody unfamiliar with, with the Wham is trading meme, let me fill you in on it. Okay? So basically, there was a game that happened where Beastie... Well, it, it was a free-for-all. Beastie, he spawned in. He was playing French. He had a wonder. And he's trying to, you know, a big part of free falls is disinformation. It's about, I'm not strong, my enemy is strong. We should work together to take them out. You know, it's, a, it's about that, you know, that misinformation, disinformation, that sort of thing about, you know, whispering into the ears of your enemies so that you can beat them. And so Beastie, he sends a couple of knights into Wham's base and he sees two traders. And so you know what he does? He types in the chat, Wham is trading. And as a result, people begin to attack Wham because he's trading. And Wham responds, why are you guys attacking me? He's got a wonder. <laughs> and then that, that was where it was born because it was, you know, it was really the height of it. The fact that Beastie was, you know, really, I mean, going to that extent. And he knew what he was doing. He, he knew it was, it was a bit of a joke as well, obviously. But at the same time, it worked. So <laughs> it, was, it was very effective. Uh, so Wham is trading right now. And... Part of the reason why this is why you cannot ignore this. Wham is on the French, which is an incredible... In my opinion, it's like the the one of the strongest free-for-all sieves at the moment. In, in, in the free-for-all meta, at least in the high free-for-all... Or the, the high ELO free-for-all meta. I think French is a really, really strong sieve. Primarily because China it gets focused down early in the game. And because China gets focused down... Oh my god, state. It's beautiful. It's beautiful state. I love it. The Elsbach Palace just sitting behind these stone walls at the back. Oh, you oh, you you know exactly what's coming in over there. But yeah, like obviously China's S tier when you think about, you know, a, a civilization uh, that, you know, independently in a vacuum, but when it starts to get focused down, that's when civilizations like the French really start to rise uh, to rise. And part of that is because of the fact they get infinite stone right here. So we can see Wham's resources. I mean, he's just popping off right now. He's got so many damn resources in the bank. He's going to be absolutely fine here. And that, that means he's going to be able to afford a wonder. And that means he's going to be able to, to, to translate all of that stone into cannon emplacements. And that's the real big thing. That is the difference maker. But now it looks like Averly has said, hey, I've, I've, <laughs> I've had it up to here with you and your traders. I'm going to take you down, boy. This is an impressive move from Averly. I don't know how effective it's going to be. Something tells me not too effective. Interestingly, Wham looking to defend his trade route up to the north. I don't know what the intention here is with this. Is he going for a landmark snipe? On who, though? He's... He's stonewalled in here. Kind of stonewalled in here, but not. Oh! <laughs> Wham! It's, so it turns out... Wham didn't like the fact that Averly had found a new home. We had a bit of a refugee crisis up here. Looks like Wham has, has solved the refugee crisis quite, quite easily quite simply he said well i'm just gonna take out the landmark that should solve it and snooper just lying in wait he's waiting for, for that notification to come through but look at the tower of victory it's been repaired back in the middle of the map and now that notification goes out a global notification that hey this landmark has been taken out but look the villagers immediately moving i'm gonna ride on board with Avery. he's on 500 wood here he's actually gonna be looking to repair back up this 
<laughs> the ultimate in cockroach technology right here. Averly rears his ugly head back out. <laughs> oh, Averly, you are very... You're very cheeky, I like it. 86 villagers for him as well. So, he's gonna continue... <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a good job, honestly. He's, he's staying alive right now. He is very much like the Bee Gees. And now the walls are really begin beginning to come up across this map. College of Artillery in the north here for Snooper. So he's got landmarks on every single side of this map. We've got, well, not every single side, but Main Town Center as well as Chamber of Commerce here over on the west. Over down towards this south side, he's got the Guild Hall. And then over towards the east, we see the College of Artillery is here as well. But uh, it looks like Averly now going to be running out of wood. Insufficient numbers of wood. Probably spent a fair bit of that wood on, on the stables. I don't know what the plan was with this stables here. Probably looking for some kind of snipe. Maybe do like a transport ship snipe across. Cannon emplacements now going to be... What was that? Was that villagers? I think that was villagers gathering wood right there. And they just got single-handedly destroyed. But... Uh, Let's take a look and see where the landmarks are for Wham. So he's got one at the back, two at the back, three, four. So it's definitely within the realm of possibilities here that Wham gets landmarks sniped. If there if there are enough scouts in the vicinity, he will be able to be taken... Like, Averly will 100% be able to take him out. The, the key here is, and it's very simple to stop that, is you would just wall them in. You would just do a stone wall across here like that it would be nice and easy middle of the map a little bit of action here compound of the defender still standing strong emplacements firing on upon these buildings up towards the north side Averly dealing with the migration problem slowly having a bit of trouble we're here a whole bunch of resources being traded out at the moment for Averly he's dropping down I think some sort of emergency keeps potentially I'm not 100% sure but we do see transport ships coming out now so he does have markets out. I don't know exactly where that market is. Nice little base that is really starting to build up. Take a look at State's base. I love the way that he's playing this. Such a smart move. And, and the fact that he's walling up over here on this western front. Still yet to really make enemies down here with the Australians as well. They're quite far away from him though. I think that's one thing to note. And if we have a look at the expansion as well, you can see that the, these walls did actually get taken out. But now villages are moving down. So there could be potential for a forward base to come through. It might be to head over for wood. Scouts at the moment. Going to... Or looking to get on that transport ship. Averly still yet to get up his fourth landmark though. Town center standing strong. He's got number one, the Tower of Victory. Number two, the compound of the Defender. And number three, it's that Hussar Academy. It's actually not up to... Uh, it's, it's not completed. So th this can be a problem. Now, a lot of people would look at that and think, yeah, that's fine. But it's not. This does not count as a landmark right now. If you were to track landmarks, if, if you come in here and if, if you kill the Tower of Victory and you kill, kill the compound of the Defender, Averly is dead. Until this bad boy hits 100% HP again, he's still sitting on two landmarks. Emplacements now coming through for State. He's looking to take out Wham, or rather uh, the walls of Averly. We'll ride on board with Wham for a little bit and see how he's doing. As he's getting plenty of upgrades coming through, looking to get plenty of upgrades at those universities. You can see he's getting absolutely everything, with the exception of, of those elite army tactics. A little bit of a scout drop coming in. He tries to get across the river, but unfortunately heads down towards that position and gets taken out before he's even really able to do too much. Scout's going to have to head back. And we hear that uh, a landmark is now being attacked. Who's attacking what? <gasps> what? 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 Iaguas is taking out Snooper. Iaguas has turned his back on Snooper. The Australian sensation has been taken out. He's been backstabbed right here. That's the first landmark that's going to go out. And you can see that immediately Snooper takes out all of the resources from here. Well, I, I want to ride on board with Snooper. He's sitting on 28,000 gold at the moment. Oh, no. Now, now we've got... Now, <laughs> now we got a problem. Alliances have been broken. We're barely 39 minutes into this game. And alliances are no longer being permitted right now. Or at least not being permitted by these Australians, it seems. And now the rest of those units are going to continue strolling over towards the, the west. <gasps> this could be big. This could actually be big because the thing is, there's one last landmark. It's this College of Artillery for Snooper. Oh, my gosh. So apparently... Snooper blocked the trade of Iaguz with his stone walls. So he was doing some sort of trade 
and we can see that there is a there there's a market over here i'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened oh are these stone walls here potentially maybe that was it maybe these stone walls came up these stone walls blocked the trade or were going to block the trade and so he punished him he said i'm gonna take out your guild hall but it looks like he's moving with intent right now to the west side of his base so i don't know how how much of a a, uh, a big threat this is but i mean remember wham is trading and at this point like we've got state that's you know he's doing well for himself over in the west of the map but at the end of the day the holy roman empire economy is not gonna be able to compete with the french that's trading and that's just facts Keeps still attacking over on this eastern side, western side. You can see he was moving in towards it, the town center. He is actually moving in towards it. This could be big right now. Town center going to get focused down. With that, the Chamber of Commerce probably going to be going down. Needs to make sure it cleans up all the villages in this area because you guys know what Snooper's like. He will sneak in a couple of villages. I would honestly, if I'm was right now, I would even begin to wall out this position here. But you know what Snooper would do? I guarantee you Snooper would build a dock, get a transport ship, transport villages, repair the town center. Like, you need to put, like, a keep here or something. Snooper going to head it away, or rather, Iago's going to head away from this position. He's not happy with it. He says we're going to back out for now. Still, that, that Hussar Academy is not going to get repaired up. I want to take a look and see exactly how Averly's doing. He's on 143 population at the moment. Villager count, not the best. Everything just hanging out. He's, look how many scouts he's got. Nice. That is a nice amount of scouts. But it's not going to be enough. And the, the thing is, right, Wham is open for, for an absolute rinsing here. If, any, if someone is paying attention, if someone does the maths here and says, hold on a minute, Wham's got all of these unprotected w landmarks, we could 100% take him out. And I think you'd be 100% right. Averly doing a bit of a run by. Scout's coming through. It's it's very interesting to me that Averly is hasn't attacked Wham or at least tried to attack Wham with that. I, I think the, th the other thing to remember is as soon as you... Oh, 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 he's massing. Oh, he's actually going to... Okay. The, the other thing to remember is as soon as you go for it once... You can't go for it again. I can see Don Arty in the chat right now saying, if someone does the maths, yeah, the players have full information, Kappa. Don Arty? That's a good point. Yes. Uh, I would expect with, with 69 scouts though, Don, that he's probably got enough information, right? Like, at what point do do is there enough scouts? <laughs> 69 is probably enough. Probably a fair amount. Landmarks didn't go down towards the south, even though there's plenty of siege here. So it looks like it was just a, it was a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a lesson taught over here. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'm going to go through the village accounts and just take a look at them. So we can see at the moment, Snooper sitting on 161. Uh, we've got Wham that's on 162. So slightly more than him. State on 195. So things are, uh, things are booming right now. Averly on 55. Iago was on 126. So at this point in the game, it definitely feels a little bit of a stalemate's come through. Second sacred site hasn't been captured, hasn't really been secured yet. And to be honest, you're probably not going to be able to secure it up against these, these French keeps, these French outposts. Keep going to come down here on this central gold mine. Averly going to be the one that's under attack. We'll ride on board with State and see how he's doing. You can see the resources starting to stack up there. He's got 12,000 stone. Where is he getting this stone from? Is he trading? For, how does he trade? That's, that's wham. I got, I've got no idea where the stone income right now is coming. Oh, it's, it's, he's just gathering stone. He's just doing it the old-fashioned way. But remember, the stone runs out. That's a big factor. And this is part of the reason why I think French is so good in these late-game situations. Is because that stone doesn't run out for the French. You see, this stone outcropping... This stone outcropping right here. This will run out. Enemy attacking landmark. Enemy attacking landmark. <laughs> Enemy attacking landmark. It's going to be the second landmark that goes down that is now destroyed. I don't know what's happened, what's developed between these guys. Whammo one in the chat saying someone do something before my power flickers. Oh, for any for anybody wondering, we, we had a little bit of a prediction here over on Twitch. And the question was, will Wham make it to the end of the game? And obviously the answer to that is going to be decided by this game. But, you know, there, there's a lot of... There's a lot of factors in play. Number one is, you know, he might get knocked out by another player. 
Uh, you know, he might get knocked out by his own internet. That's always going to be something that happens. We saw that happen last week. And obviously, you know, we don't have any sort of functionality that enables Wham to rejoin the game or do anything like that. So it looks like Iago is going to be turning his attention on Snooper. Manages to clear out that landmark. Now, remember, it's going to be very easy here for Snooper to actually just repair up these landmarks. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the first thing he actually does here. We'll watch to see how he plays it. But up in the north... He's still got that College of Artillery nice and safe. Everybody just chilling out for now. And I think this is the consequence of, of, of spawns that happen like this. It kind of spawns like... Do you guys remember the old Danube River? It, it would do something similar. Where it would spawn all these rivers. Now, the majority of these rivers are, are actually pretty good with regard to their crossings. But it can be quite tough. Because with so many crossings, uh, it, it becomes very easy to wall up all of that. But you do have the potential for drops to come through. Knights now coming through, looking to take out plenty of villagers. They managed to take out some estates. He's out here in the middle of the map. He's got so many damn villagers. He's got them out here just gathering up gold because why the heck not? And still we see Averly building. Averly right now, our underdog story. Still gathering up scouts. You just know he's saying right now to Wham, you know, hey, Wham, please don't attack me. Please don't attack me. You can see he's building more transport ships and we see a blacksmith going to be coming down here as well. He's looking to research, I'm assuming, wedge rivets. Now, the thing is, Wham knows about this as well. So maybe he's whispered into Wham's ear and he said, hey, don't worry about me. I'm not, I'm not a threat. I'm not going after you. I'm going after those guys who came for me before. People like State. Those are, they, those are the main threats. But the thing is, even if he was to do that, I mean, State's pretty much walled him out from here. You can see the walls coming across like that. There's no walls over this way. So technically, he should be able to get through. If he wanted to go for state, Ellsback Palace is definitely... <laughs> Look at the walls coming up for state right now. Ellsback Palace. I mean, it is this is almost a perfect little spot here for a, a wonder to come online. Scout going to get taken out. So you can see Averly is actually looking right now for four wonders or four landmarks. Stonewall going to come through. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking right now of like ways that we could sort of incentivize a little less passive play because there, there clearly seems to be a bit of a stalemate. And so one of the things I'm thinking like, what if we made it? So obviously at the moment, if, if you go for a wonder and you complete the wonder uh, and you win with it, you get an extra five points if there's four or more people alive when you do that. But what if we incentivize the very first wonder in the game? What if we said, okay, we're going to make it so the person who makes... Oh, we got movement. The person who makes the first wonder... If they win with it, gets like an extra 15 points or something stupid like that to really make people want to go for it. Because the, the problem is right now, if even if State wanted... Okay, even if State wanted to go for a wonder, he wouldn't do it because there's so many powerhouses in the game right now that he wouldn't dare think about it. That looks like we might have some... We might have some movement down there on that western front. Up towards the north. Keep going to be slowly expanding out the presence here. We can see those landmarks still unprotected for the most part here in the base of Wham. Plenty of relics back here as well. And we've got ourselves the potential for a drop to come through. State is building a wonder. There it is. Great Palace of Flensburg comes in. Now, this is something that we talked about earlier in the game. If there's anybody who's in a good position to defend a wonder, it's State. He is in a great spot. So for anybody wondering, pun intended, this is going to net him an extra five points if he's able to pull off the victory. There are still five people in this game. One, two, three, four, five people in this game. I guess the other option is that we could also look at doing a potential tiered system as well so that the more people in the game when a wonder gets made, the more points... Uh, awarded to the player for making that wonder because obviously if you make a wonder with eight people alive versus four people alive those are big di they are different factors scout's gonna come out now snooper gonna spot this but remember Averly. i mean he's gonna be able to come out Ooh. 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 Oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Snooper. It was a, it was a beautiful experience getting to know you, Snooper. But uh, ooh. don't you hate it when the villagers don't build the wall, Snooper? Mm. Isn't that just the worst, Snooper, when villagers don't build the wall? 
We could have had it all. You could have had a wall as well. But unfortunately for Snooper, I don't think there's any possible way he repairs these landmarks back in time. And now with that, Snooper gets knocked out. No cockroaching today. Averly takes the three points and he says, Sayonara, thanks for playing. He's able to take him out. And we saw earlier that Snooper was hovering. He was waiting. He was sitting here with a whole bunch of elite royal knights just waiting, just chilling out waiting to snipe out this landmark from Averly, and as a consequence Averly now turns his back upon him and says you know what mate I, I don't like the way you play he takes him out gets behind the walls very smart move there from him look at that beautiful little drop he knew what he was doing he had this game this planned in his mind 30 minutes ago i guarantee you th this plan was born 30 minutes ago at least towards the north though we hear that keep continuing to attack. We're, we're going to ride on board with State because he's going to be the one who is looking to do a lot of the defending here. We see stone walls coming down to the south. Doc's going to be going up on both sides of the river here, looking to block this out. He could be thinking about demo ships. That's always going to be an option for him. Doesn't have a whole lot of space, I'll be honest with you guys. When it comes to defending these wonders, obviously this looks like the perfect game to defend. You know, you've got this corner, corner wonder. You got a guy in the corner, he's got the wonder, everything looks perfect. But the reality is that when it comes to these wonder victories, a lot of the time it's the guys that have got the giant bases that are able to do it because it's just so difficult to move through the bases. So as an example, let's say Wham builds a wonder back here, uh, which he, he's actually just realized he's going to start stonewalling. So a smart move there. Uh, but in the event he wanted to build a wonder, look how long it's going to take for you to get through Wham's base. You're going to have to go through all of these things before you finally get to the wonder. Whereas for state, it's a little bit different. It's it, it's really just, you know, the, the water is right here. So we'll look to see how he defends it. We see Averly losing a landmark. I don't know whether it's that one in the middle. We'll take a look. There it is. It's going to be the hand cannoneers taking it down. The hand cannoneers as well as the trebuchets taking it down from Iaguas. A lot of units moving across the map. We'll see if we can find those scouts, actually. The scouts just chilling out for now. Stone walls did come up across the majority of the base. I think a smart move here, in addition to bringing all these scouts to snipe landmarks, is to bring villagers just to chop through these stone walls. Because you can't chop through the stone wall, but you can definitely chop around the stone wall. Keep coming up over on this western front here for Wham. He's beginning to move out as well. We'll take a look down towards the south and we can hear plenty of outposts just firing off. You can see the villagers down here towards this position. Military count now for state. Slowly but steadily moving into those uh, those higher numbers. He's on 41 at the moment. Things getting cleaned up. We're going to ride on board with Wham. I suspect it's probably going to be a little bit quieter from Wham's perspective as he looks to clean up these buildings here from Averly. Averly, I suspect, probably not going to be helping out take out this, uh, this wonder. And a smart move from him, honestly. He's able to snipe out a huge threat in this game, Snooper. And at the same time, He's now able to basically make it a two versus one for state. And that's a really good position for him. Now, keep in mind, he's got emergency repairs here. He's also got the Ellsback Palace. Now, I don't know whether this is actually connected. I don't think it is. But we do see Averly's landmark go down. It's going to be in the center. So a single landmark remains for Averly. The, the doors have been opened. Averly might actually be going down here. All those scouts were moving around. But unfortunately for him, I think it might be good night right now. As the curtain once again begins to close for another player. We've seen four people tap out already in this game. And we might have ourselves a fifth one. Because Wham looks like he is about to take out Averly. Good night, sweet prince. It was a pleasure getting to know you. And with that, we have our fourth place player. Averly gets taken out, and there were three. It's the three guys on the bottom. We got Wham, we got Iaguas, and of course, we've got State, the man with the wonder. Sacred sites are potentially being captured at the moment. We can see neutralizers coming up. We'll check on the wonder tracker and see how long we've got. 10 minutes and 36 seconds, so it is going to be impossible for any kind of sacred site steal. I think it takes 30 seconds, and you can see it keep coming up in the middle now. So Iago was, was thinking about it, just not reacting fast enough. And that's the thing, right? If he was able to take this second sacred site, as well as this third one in the middle. And now we see Wham building a wonder as well. It's going to be coming down. It's the Notre Dame coming down. I don't even think that's how you pronounce Notre Dame, but there you go. Notre Dame going to be coming down, and emplacement's going to be going absolutely ham here. Ham on Wham. Look at the cannons on the backside here. Royal Cannons coming through. Wham going to be looking to secure his own wonder up here as well. 
plenty of villagers on this bad boy. Wham is looking to make enemies over on this side of the map. We can see a neutral wall still yet to be taken down. Sacred Sight's getting capturing, captured as well. You get a victory condition. You get a victory condition. You get a victory condition. Iagwa's also going to be going for a victory condition here. So in the event that they are able to indeed take down Wham, there is the potential that, that Iagwa's is going to be able to snipe out a, a landmark victory from Wham. So even though Wham is going for one himself, Notre Dame is up. Take a look at that bad boy right now. It is on your screen. We've got Wham. We've got uh, a, a beautiful Notre Dame here for you. We've got State with the, the Great Palace of Flensburg. And of course, we've got Sacred Sites that are now coming up. The poor man's wonder coming up here for Iaguas. He'll be looking to get that one out sooner rather than later. A lot of Siege down here on the south side. He's made his way through already. If we hear attacks coming off. It's just going to be those emplacements firing off at each other. A, a little bit of friendly fire. In fact, I wouldn't even say friendly fire. And now we do have that uh, that monk going to be capturing up the sacred side. So this one's going to be able to undercut uh, Wham. We can see he's at 14 minutes at the moment. Not going to be able to undercut State here. So a, a pretty smart move here from him because he's still... Like, if, if Iaguas takes the sacred site and it, he is going to cut State and cut Wham off as well, if he's going to undercut them both rather, then the problem that he has is that he becomes the target. Whereas if, if, so now he's approaching Sacred Sight victory, he's going to beat out Wham, that's for sure, but he's not going to beat out State. So they've still got to work together to take out State. So I think this is a very smart move here from Iaguas. And I, I think he's played this absolutely perfectly. The fact that he's able to take out the, the landmarks of Snooper and then somewhat cause the downfall of Snooper there by that snipe coming through. And then at the same time, just immediately, we see that, uh, that Averly gets taken out. Up towards the north, we continue to... Oh my lord, look at the siege numbers coming out. This is looking pretty damn hot right now. Siege continues pushing through. How much have we got here? We got seven cannons, seven royal culverins. We got four royal cannons. We got four mangonels. Why the hell not, wouldn't you? Unit's going to be firing off towards this. We got keeps on the backside looking to reinforce. Plenty of production up here. And Wham knows how to FFA. Wham looking to try and take down the enemy wonder before his internet gets cut out. And now he's going to really try and push this one through. We don't see any kind of drops. We don't see any kind of water usage here at all. It's just going to be these, these trebuchets that are slowly but steadily taking these down. We'll check in on the Wonder Timer and get a bit of an idea at where, where we are at right now. We're at seven minutes to go until State is victorious. You can see he's got plenty of resources in the bank right now. And we can see State looking to whisper into the ears whispering into the ears of Wham right now. You can see what he said. I, I apologize, that message is being cut off right now. I can I can try my best to fix it up, but I'm, I know I'm not going to get it perfect because Snooper has now died. The, the chat box changes. It, it just AoE, AoE 4 things, just AoE 4 things. Wham's actually not trading anymore. Wham has stopped the trade. He knows that, you know, stop the count, stop the trade. It has happened. The trade has been stopped. Looks like State going to be holding on up towards this position. Only 45 villagers remain for him. Look at the reinforcements coming in from Iaguas. He might have done a, a bit of a delete. And now pushing through on this south side. And if, if you kill me, nothing changes for Ethan. There you go. You can see he's, he's, he's trying his best to whisper it. The question is whether it gets bought. State knows he might be in trouble here. He's trying to defend on two fronts. You can see a lot of units coming down towards the south. There's a fair bit of production on the backside here. A, a fair bit of a way to get back towards that palace of Flensburg. Ideally, you'd love to see emergency repairs come out for it as well. That's going to be a big factor here. Hand cannon is on the backside, dishing out that English damage. Also got the outpost up here for that extra attack speed. You can see just how quickly he sh shreds through all of this stuff on the south side. Towards the north, the push is continuing well for Wham. And with this, Iaguas is looking stronger. He's looking better. I don't think State's going to be able to hold this one. He definitely might have gone a little bit early on the, on the Wonder. But I tell you what, it was a ballsy play. It was a ballsy play. Sacred Sight's continuing to tick, remember. Those hand cannon is just firing off, just powering off. Emergency repair is going to be coming through here. 
Keep going to be able to stay alive for a little bit longer. Forced back from this position. State looking to try and hold on. Springwood's coming through. Going to be able to force away that siege up towards the north. Outpost going to be getting dropped down here. Wham going to be looking to get through some emplacements. And that's exactly what we see. Cannon emplacements coming through. Keep going to be able to drop down. He's cleaning this out completely. And still the Barbican just stands watching the battle as it unfolds. Looks to have little to no opinion on what goes on beyond, before it. Reinforcements coming across the map, just trickling across. And this is the difference between these two players. You can you can tell the, the experience that Wham has got in this environment because he brings his reinforcement buildings right up to the front line. Going to be struggling a little bit here. Ideally, you'd have some hand cannoneers in here. Looks like he's only got Elite Arbor Trio at the moment. Bombard's going to get... Going to get crushed a little bit in there, but they managed to clean up the majority of it. Keep going to be coming up as well. And with that, a nice little bit of a foothold. Interestingly, State never actually killed the remains of the Chinese base. So something that we, we don't always see, the, the remnants of the Chinese base remaining like that. Uh, but uh, it definitely seems like space for State was an issue. Interesting that he didn't opt to clean it up. Down towards the south. Majority of the attack down here still really stalled out. There are six trebuchets in here. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker and see how long we've got. We've got three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Not long before there is a potential victory coming out right now. It could be State managing to hold on. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. 7,000 food, but it's not going to be enough to build up the rest of it. As long as he's able to take out the siege, he's going to be A-OK. -okay, and that's going to be the trick here. If he's able to, to look past the units, if he's able to focus down the siege, then he's going to be fine. It's the trebuchets on the south side, because remember... The, 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 the siege workshops, they are slow. He's got them up on the front line here. They're pumping out trebuchets nonstop. But that's going to be that's gonna be the hard part. As long as he's able to take that out. But the push now really coming through. State trying his best to hold on. The numbers are starting to dwindle. You can see his population now currently sitting at about 180. Trying to hold on. Just spamming out units up towards the north. Keep still looking strong. we got three minutes until one to defeat comes in. That is correct. The Palace of Flensburg stands strong, stands victorious. But will it stand forever? That is the question. And now Wham continues pushing through. More keeps looking to potentially get dropped down here. There's the second one coming through now. We saw a whole bunch of, of bombards look to, or cannons rather, fire off on this wall accidentally. We'll check in down towards the south as we've got quite a little bit of a push coming in. Now keep in mind, these sacred sites still being held. Walls coming in as well. So Wham has not split his attention here. Wham obviously has his own wonder, the Notre Dame. It is up here. Uh, sacred site, that's going to be that's gonna be undercutting the Notre Dame, but it is not going to be undercutting the Palace of Flensburg. So as long as he's able to take that down, he's going to be fine. But you can see he's really struggling to, to get through all of these buildings. Trebuchet is going to continue to move up here. Stay going to be looking to hold on here. He's done it before. Is he going to be able to do it again? That's going to be the question. State really looking quite good here as we've got two minutes until one to defeat. The push is coming, but I feel like it might be going a little bit too slow. State looking very, very strong. Managing to hold on. Continuing to drain units. He's down to 145 population, 146 population. He's sitting right on the precipice. Down to 20 villagers, 120 military. He's got Springholds just marching back and forth, looking to snipe out any siege wherever it be possible. Trebuchets. You can hear them just firing off together in one big beast of a shot. Now, landmark snipes are a possibility as well. We've got a Regnitz Cathedral down towards the south side. Three minutes until Sacred Sight defeat as well. And remember, we've also got the Ellsback Palace up towards the north. But keep in mind, all of these buildings are going to be taking less siege damage the power of the Ellsback Palace is being realized right now. Keep in mind, this bad boy is providing that network influence to every single one of these buildings. Every de every building is taking less damage. And now Wham realizes there's one minute until one to defeat. This could be it. State is holding on right now. All of the units going to be just marching through. They realize that they don't have time to mess around. They don't have time to beat around the bush. They're going to go for this right now. Here we thought State wasn't going to hold, but all of a sudden things starting to look good for State. Starting to look really good for him. Springlet's continuing to move around. No progress at all in this position. We see the Bombards moving in, but the numbers here are looking very, very thin. We might have ourselves a wonder victory coming out early in this game. I didn't think he was going to be able to hold it, but now we see the Regnus Cathedral being focused down. With that, Iago's going to be in a little bit of a tough position because he's not going to be able to make his way through. 
We can see the units that are getting taken. Focus down on this position here. He's looking to come through with you. Two minutes until the sacred defeat. I think I think we've got ourselves a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that State is going to be trying his best to get through here. Bombard's making their way to crack through this wall. But there's just too much stuff. There's just too much stuff. He's on 91 military units. 34 wood. 671 gold. And with that, your game is called. State is your victor here with a beautiful one to victory in this fourth round of the Outback Octagon. Whoa. Damn, dude. He put that he put that wonder down with five people in the game. Iagos, Snooper, Averly, Wham, and himself. That is a plus five points if I've ever seen it. Impressive stuff there. We'll check the military count and see who got second place in that game. We see Wham was on 661 kills, State 972, Iagos on 755. So he'll be taking away second place in this game. Let's take a look at the village account there, and you can see that State reaching all-time highs up there, baby. He's looking like Bitcoin at the top there. But unfortunately, it does eventually come down like Bitcoin. Rest in peace. Uh, and uh, we'll have a look at military account at the end. You can see that Iag was up to almost 200 military there. So absolutely beautiful play right there from State. Congratulations go over to him. It was a wonderful performance. Look, it, it, it started off slowly. Litacore, unfortunately, spawned in a bad spot next to Casper. He did manage to survive a little bit longer than what Casper did after getting teamed up upon. Uh, and eventually, the game was won with a wonder victory. So once again, congratulations go over to State. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out Snooper. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch him. Uh, but he's the one who we've uh, we've hijacked the chat from. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.